This is Signal University's presentation of what is a modulator? A modulator is a device that takes a single video source, passes it through electronics, and then makes it fit on a very specific frequency range. 555 to 560 megahertz is just an example. It can be practically any frequency range. Why would you do this? The answer is simple. Because you can have multiple video sources, feed them through multiple modulators, and put them all on the same wire. If you didn't have modulators, you'd have to change wires every time you wanted to change channels. Not only that, HDMI cables have a limitation of only about 50 feet. Modulator systems can go a thousand feet or even more with the proper amplification. This allows you to save money in a large building. Modulators actually work fairly simply. Starting with a basic electrical wave, they take the signal wave, which is represented as the middle picture, and add it so the two are actually combined. Then when it gets back to the television, they're uncombined and the actual signal wave comes out and can be sent straight to the television. There are a lot of different kinds of modulation schemes. Some of them are very easy to understand and some of them are very hard to understand. The kinds that are easy to understand are AM and FM. With AM, the wave gets bigger and smaller depending on the signal that's applied to it. With FM, the wave gets tighter and looser depending on the signal that's applied to it. The other two, QAM and 8PSK, are actually digital signals where a wave spins around in 3D space and its position in 3D space as it's coming towards you determines its digital profile. The picture that you see is just one way of trying to understand that digital wave. It's really not designed for humans to understand. It's really only designed for computers. Installing a modulator system basically is pretty simple. Start with a video source. This can be an antenna, satellite television, pre-recorded video, even something off the internet. You're going to need a separate modulator for each video source. That means that you need a separate modulator for every channel of DirecTV. If you're going to put 100 channels over a wire, you're going to need 100 DirecTV receivers and 100 modulators. All the signals are passed through modulators and wired into a combiner. That combiner puts them all on a single cable and the single cable goes out into the world, reaches as many televisions as you need, and television can just tune channel 2, channel 3, channel 4 to get what they need instead of having to change video sources. When you have a really big modulator installation, we call it a head end. It looks something like this, where you've got a bunch of receivers or tuners, a bunch of modulators, and all the wiring required to actually make it work. A head-end system something like this would be used in a hotel or any building where you want to put multiple channels on a single television remotely. Now in the past, some people used modulator systems in their homes. With standard definition, this wasn't very expensive, but with high definition, it is quite expensive. Why? Because content providers like ESPN and HBO require that if you're going to use a modulator, that you pay them special fees and you use special encryption as well. As a result, the use of modulators at home has practically disappeared. It's worth pointing out that if you have a modulator, you're going to need some things to go along with it, besides the antenna or dish that actually sits up on the roof. You're going to need a tuner and a decoder. In cases like satellite, these are often combined into a single receiver. The tuner actually pulls the signal in off the air. The decoder takes away the special encryption that's put in so that people have to pay for it. You'll also need something like a signal meter when you install a head-end system or a modulator system because even though you can plan for stuff back in the office, there's always something different that happens when you install. Not to mention, over time, systems change. Cables can wear out or get degraded, or signals can get stronger and weaker at the broadcast source. So a signal meter is always recommended when you're using a modulator system. 
That concludes this quick look at modulators. If you have any questions, be sure to go to forums.solidsignal.com. Go to our live chat at solidsignal.com or call us at 877-312-4547.